Hey folks, welcome back to another video. You join me in sunny Spain. I hope you're staying warm and dry wherever you are. I've seen back home in the UK, there's been quite a lot of snow overnight and this morning. Uh, so I hope you're wrapped up well. Uh, just to give you the quick tour while I'm here, uh, that's the village of Chilea to my side. That's where I spend most of my winters. Uh, up at the top of that, there's a nice church. Looks really nice, lit up at night especially. And then uh, above that again, there's a castle, uh, 12th century castle, uh, it's an Islamic castle. And to the side of that, it's built on the crag, the Peñata, and there's loads of climbing on there. Um, and there's some easier climbing there by Chilea standards as well. Some stuff in the fives and sixes, which are a bit of a premium uh, around here. A lot of the stuff's quite a bit harder. Uh, and just to the other side, um, there's a shady crag that I'm going to go up to in a minute and hopefully find some cracks and stuff to uh, slot some bits in to do today's video. If you spotted the boy in that shot, well done, because I haven't seen him for a little bit. I keep hearing rustling, but uh, he's hunting for something or other in the bushes. Today's video, uh, it's going to be um, a bit of a chatty one with some practical bits, uh, building on some of the other videos we've done in the past. There's kind of two types of belaying in a generic sense. There's direct belays, which is uh, where you belay directly off the anchors using a guide plate or an Italian hitch, that kind of thing. And the other one is uh, our indirect belays, uh, whereby you've got the belay device on yourself and then you're attached to the anchors. Um, and we've done videos on this in the past of how to set the sort of set pieces up, if you like. And that's kind of the easy bit, really. You can learn those set pieces easily enough on your sling mountain, wherever that might be, or out on the crag. The trickier bit, I think, is deciding uh, when it's appropriate to use which method. Uh, by default, I'd probably rather go and direct belay off the anchors, but it isn't always the right thing to do. So I thought it would be a useful one to build on those previous videos and the skills we've looked at before uh, and delve into the decision making side of things so you'll join me in a minute in the shade probably having hopefully found some cracks to set something up and talk about that subject I'll see you in a second Found the two things I was looking for. Uh, the boy was uh, stuck in a little spot. He couldn't quite get to me, but he was waiting patiently, which is very good of him. Uh, the other one is a couple of cracks that I've managed to slot a couple of nuts into. I've built a little belay here, equalized sling with a master point, standard sort of stuff. As I said in that little intro, it's not really a video of how to do these things. So check out the other videos we've done for that side of stuff. It's more about why and when and where we do these things. Okay, so I've built an anchor. I could do lots of different things with that, but I said in the intro that if I can direct belay, I probably will. So the first thing is I've got a carabiner clipped into the master point. I'll get myself safe on that. Clovich, pretty standard stuff. Do the carabiner up, job done. I could shout down to our mate that I'm safe now. Personally, I tend to wait a fraction longer and get my belay device ready to go. Clip that in do that up it's in the shelf uh, just to make things clear and simple for this video there's pros and cons of where to put it at that point I'll shout down safe I'll take the rope in once my mate's taken me off belay uh, nice new decathlon rope 9.5 millimeters 80 meters and it's about 100 quid in the UK I think that's a bit of a bargain for a workhorse rope actually I've used them quite a lot and uh, they seem to last just as long as any other rope I've ever used really put them on belay do the carabiners up because I want to do things bang on in the video uh, do your double check, shout down to your mate, climb when ready. Belay away, they're coming up, they get to the hard move, they fall off. Okay, well that's fine, isn't it? The device does the locking because I've using a guide mode, a style plate, an ATC guide. Of course, I'm gonna keep hold of this breaking strand, but it's pretty stress-free because the device does all the work. When they fall off, where does the weight go? It goes straight on the anchors, does it? There's no weight on me. I can sort of move around a little bit. I want to stay snug on it because that's you know part of not shocking anchors and stuff, isn't it? But I can move around. It's not uncomfortable. So for me as the belayer, this is just ace, isn't it? It's quick to set up. It's nice to belay. Uh, it's easy to take a quick photo or grab a quick drink if you're on some multi-pitch and keep belaying. It's nice for that. It doesn't have to be a guide plate. It could be an Italian hitch. That would still be a direct belay. You just lose that auto locking function of it, although there are versions of a locking uh, Italian hitch. Comfortable for me, great for me. But if it's got that massive plus, there must be a downside to it. Anything that's good has to have downsides to it as well, doesn't it? And I guess that is, when my weight falls off, where does all that weight go? It goes on the anchors. I've said that's a good thing, but could it be a bad thing as well? Yes, it could. It could. 
It's all about how good these anchors are. Are they unquestionably good? In climbing, we use that phrase bomb proof a lot. Are they bomb proof? Taking a step back, trad climbing. In a lot of the world, you go trad climbing, you climb your pitch with cams and nuts and whatever else, you get to the belay, and often it is a bolted belay. Two nice shiny solid bolts often linked together for you and equalized with a chain and stuff like that. Of course, you're still gonna check it, check everything you ever use in climbing, but 99 times out of 100, you'll go, yeah, they're flipping ace then, click, bang, done. Could use your lanyard, I've got a Petzl connect down there, could connect like this, whatever, a direct belay. However, in the UK and other countries as well, but especially in the UK, because that's where I'm based most of the time, we don't have bolted belays very often at all. It's kind of an ethics thing. <sighs> so we're just one, we're not really used to using bolted belays uh, a lot of the time, uh, although you know, plenty of us climb abroad and stuff. And two, we have to go hunting around for nuts and cams and all sorts. So often, although we're trying to build nice solid belays, of course we are, and nearly all the time we do, but we might want to add an extra level of security to it by introducing ourselves into the system to form a bit of a sort of a shock absorption. So what would we do there? Well, actually, if I was using these two anchors, but I wasn't happy to put the weight straight onto them, I'd still do this. I could still do the same setup. I don't have to, there's other ways of doing it, but I could do the same setup. What's gonna change is where this is. So instead of the weight going directly onto the system, onto the anchors, it's gonna go indirectly onto the anchors because it's going via me, right? So I clip my belay plate in, I'll get it the right way around. I've been doing too much sport climbing, I'm not used to this. Clip that in, good to go. Same stuff, climb when ready, belay them up. This time when they fall off, I've got to hold on a bit tighter, haven't I? Because this isn't doing as much, it's not doing any auto locking. It's giving me friction, which is great, but I'm gonna to have to hold on tight to that. The weight is going onto me first and then onto the anchors. So you will do a bit of shock absorption there, therefore protecting the anchors. Of course, you might well place more than two if you're not sure about the anchors, three, four, five, whatever. It could also be, just to sort of touch on this, I don't do much winter climbing, which is why I come to Spain, but winter climbing, ice stuff, snow stuff, you might want to give that some protection as well in the form of your shock absorption. Great, well, you can do that as normal. It might be you've used a rope because they're far apart. And that's where there's some other advantages of the sort of indirect rope belay setups, for example. Sometimes we have to hunt around for the gear a bit more, and it's just more practical to bring it all back to clove hitches on you, for example. It could be, imagine yourself at Stanage if you've ever climbed there, all the anchors are on the floor because they're boulders, right? And that means your guide plate is then on the floor. It works, but what do you need to do if you have to lower someone in guide mode? We have to do all that sort of redirecting stuff or, you know, there's vari uh, variations of that. But it's a bit more of a faff if it's kind of pinned to the floor, where if it's on you, well, you can just lower away, can't you? So it's easier in that sense. And you might not have the knowledge uh, to uh, solve that problem and lower someone safely. That's key, safely. So it might be that the indirect system is a better option. In the UK, we tend to default to teaching indirect first and then evolve that into direct belaying because that's what our crags uh, you know, give us most of the time. If you are on the same sort of course in the US, then you might actually start by doing direct belays and evolve that into indirect belays. As climbers, we want all the options available to us. We want as much knowledge as possible so we can put the right option into practice in the right situation. And let's say you're on a multi-pitch climb, you have five pitches, random number. It might be some of it's indirect, some of it's direct, so you've got to swap and change all the time. It's nice to do direct DNA. Like I say, it's comfy for you. You can sort of multitask a little bit. It's great, but there is a place for indirect B laying as well. Now, on this video, I will absolutely, I can guarantee I will get some comments saying, oh, direct B laying is the wrong thing to do. Indirect B laying is the wrong thing to do. Neither of them are. They're just, they just could be the wrong thing in that situation. That's uh, the difficult part of climbing is picking, choosing, picking and choosing the right option, isn't it? So please do fire away with questions. I'm always happy to answer them as best I can. You know that I say that every time because uh, uh, you know these decisions and judgments, they take practice, they take time on the crag having learnt the set pieces, but then you know time thinking about what to do where. And it will take you longer to make these decisions when you're first starting. When you've been doing loads, you look at something, you make a decision quite quickly. That's just the way it goes, isn't it? Well, I hope that video has been interesting. As always, do find us on Insta, find us on Facebook, click the like button, smash the subscribe button. All the support is massively appreciated. And yes, I know I say it every time, but I'm gonna keep saying it as well. 
Thanks very much for watching again. More videos coming up very soon.